Structure chart example, checkout system. The following structure chart outlines the movement of data, processes, and parameters related to a checkout system that may be used in a store. So think of this in many scale size stores. So could think of it as a grocery store where you're buying many products, or even just a retail store like JB Hi-Fi where you might be buying one product at a time. You can also think about this system as well in the context of user oriented or employee oriented systems, uh, where it's either the customer or an employee at the store using the actual system to put the products through in order to buy uh, the actual products at a checkout, okay? So see if you can see this logic as we go through this diagram. So in order to start off first and try to think of yourself when you do self checkouts, when you go to a store, what would you start off with? Well, the first step that starts off the actual system is you scanning an item. Okay, you scan that item and specifically you scan the item's barcode data. So that barcode data goes into the system and the system will then display the product's details by usually checking a database behind the scenes. It displays the product details and really a, with the checkout system, confirmation of what the product is usually appears on screen. But then the thing that needs to be taken to the next step is specifically the price. Okay, it gets the price of the product that got scanned and then we use that to generate a subtotal. Now, as said before, this could be some sort of uh, checkout system using a grocery store. And in that is instance, we're scanning multiple products. So these steps all involve repetition because we're going to do this over and over again. We're going to be scanning items, their products will appear on screen, and the subtotal will be constantly being updated with every new item that I scan. Once I've scanned all my items then, we then want to pay for all my items. So the next step is getting the total price in order to do a payment. Now, sometimes at this stage here too, a customer might look at the screen and realize something's off with the price. And it could be that they might have scanned an item twice or an item might have had the wrong barcode on it. Okay, In that instance, then we need to do what's known as a rollback. And a rollback kind of undoes a scanned item that might have went through the system here. Okay, And then we need a confirmation that it went okay. That usually does need to be done by an employee within the store, whether it is a self-out checkout terminal or not. Okay, it can also be done later in the system or even after when the actual transaction has been processed. Okay, but that's an, an instance there where we need a confirmation before the system can go ahead if we're going to conduct a rollback there. Okay, but let's say now at this point everything is okay with the, uh, all my products that have gone into the system. Well, the next step is to decide how am I going to pay for them and that's a decision and most systems either offer FPOS or cash. Okay, and with FPOS, that means using a card, okay, as a debit card or a credit card to pay for my goods or cash. And usually then I need an employee to come over for me to pay, okay, and get my change from that. So essentially, I need to make my payment and nothing's going to proceed unless my payment is okay. So I need that confirmation either from my bank or from a cashier at the store that the payment is okay. It's all been conducted correctly. Once that uh, control parameter has been satisfied, my payment is okay. The system can then proceed with using the transaction data to generate a receipt. Okay, and obviously on that receipt will be time stamped with the date and time of when this transaction took place, the products I bought, and the total price there. So I hope this video is giving you an understanding of how a structure chart can be used to show a checkout system, how it can show the flow of data through the system there, how repetition takes place with the scanning of items, how control parameters need to be used uh, to halt the system when confirmation needs to be made, and ultimately how it leads to a receipt showing the proof of transaction for this system, showing that the actual transaction took place.